So here in the US, after several months of waiting, we now have the Apple Vision Pro available to buy in the Apple Store. I went and picked one up yesterday and I wanted to show a M365 enterprise type of desk worker type of perspective on how to use the Apple Vision Pro with that platform of applications. So in this video, I've got lots of other videos where we'll deep dive into certain use cases and things like that. This particular video, I wanted to cover how to get set up with the Microsoft 365 experience in three different ways. I'm going to cover the native apps in the native operating system called Vision OS. Then we're going to cover, if you're not able to do that, how to use the web application. So how to log in via Safari, use that as an option. And then if you want to, we're going to show the third option being mirroring your screen from your Mac computer and using the office apps within that. Let's get the headset on and see what it's like. Okay. So we've got the vision pro on and you can see the, uh, the pass through experience. I've got the home applications right up here in front of me and you can see directly through those. It's, it's incredible how good of detail this is looking at my keyboard. It's much better than the quest pro that I had beforehand. Um, but I don't want to make this disorienting for you. So we're going to use the dial on top to just bring in a little bit of the environment. So this is Mount Hood. I'm going to use this kind of as a backdrop so that it hopefully doesn't make it disorienting for you. You can see that it fades out. So I brought it in just partially. Okay, so to start, we're going to see what apps are available as of launch time uh, for Microsoft 365. So to do that, we're going to go into the Vision OS App Store. We're gonna pop that open and over on the side, there is the search capability. If you search for the word Microsoft up at the top, you're going to see um, four applications that are optimized for the Vision OS. That's Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and Microsoft Teams. So those are one category of apps that you can use. The other thing is there's iOS apps that are available. If a developer has chosen not to opt out specifically, their app will be available in the App Store. So if we look at iPhone and iPad apps, we open up this category, we can just go straight to Microsoft to see all of the Microsoft applications that are available from iOS over into the uh, Vision OS experience. So we've got Copilot, Loop, um, the Microsoft Teams as well. There's Microsoft Edge. We've got Outlook available, Word, PowerPoint, OneNote. So these aren't necessarily optimized for Vision OS, but they work as an iPad application that's basically like a slate or a tablet inside of your view. So let's get out of this. We'll click the little X. We're back on the home screen with the applications. If I swipe over, you'll see I've installed the four main applications that are for Vision OS. If we go back to the main screen, there's this compatible app section right here that's a folder of applications. So we're gonna take that, and you can see that I also installed Copilot, Edge, uh, Outlook, and Microsoft Loop. So four more apps, I've got seven apps total installed on my Vision Pro. The first app that I think most people are probably gonna to wanna to install is Microsoft Teams. So they can get in, start chatting, start, you know, messaging people and also attend meetings. So we're gonna go down here to Microsoft Teams and we're gonna see what the login experience looks like for a brand new account. So brand new Microsoft Teams, we're gonna click use an account and I'm gonna type in my uh, MVP credentials. So I've got an MVP tenant. So we're gonna enter those credentials You'll see that it's logging in with, uh, with my account. It's the standard Microsoft login process. I don't wanna use Outlook Mobile right now, so I'm just gonna have it text me. Now, I got that text message, so I can just go in here, I can pinch and hold, and I can paste that in. Or actually, let's go right here. I'm gonna tap that, and uh, yeah, we'll say delete after use. So I put in that dual factor authentication. We're gonna hit verify. And now it's logged in. So this is a Microsoft 365 E5 account, and um, it does not have conditional access through Intune turned on. So you'd notice when you go look at the App Store on Vision OS, there are two main apps missing that I would personally install. One is OneDrive is not available, 
And second is the Intune company portal is not available at this time. So you cannot, as of launch day, you cannot register a device as a um, as a uh, a corporate device using Intune. But you'll see, here I am. I've got Microsoft Teams all up and ready to go. I can go down here. I can look at a new chat. And um, sure, why not? Let it have access to my, my contacts. That's okay. And I'm going to do a new chat. And I'm going to enter a name. We'll do like Alex Wilbur. So Alex Wilbur, I can go in here and I can start sending a message. Hey, Alex, this is me on the Vision Pro. So there we go. I've started a new conversation with, you know, fake Contoso user Alex Wilbur, and it sent it off and it's available. Um, I can also browse my Microsoft Teams. So you see there's my Microsoft Teams right along the side. Um, a couple of deep dive teams that I share with Andy Honeycutt. And then I can view Viva Engage because that's an app that's available in my tenant. If I go down here and I hit more, then you'll see that I've got my calendar, I've got whiteboard, I've got all of the Teams applications available to me. So I can go into my calendar, I can see that calendar at a view, I can go up at the top, and we can change that view from a list to, you know, like a, a, a day by day to like that agenda view. I can start a new meet now. So we're gonna hit, it wants to find devices, be able to use my, my devices. So we're gonna go in here, here's the new meet now option. Now I wanna see what options do I have available? If I click on speaker, I can audio off or I can speaker because I'm not using any Bluetooth headphones right now. If it was AirPods, I think I would be able to see my AirPods. I can turn my mic on or off and I can turn video on or off. I'm really curious what this does. So let's turn on video and allow it to access the camera. Oops, there we go. So we'll see what happens. And it looks like it's not pulling anything on here. I'm curious once I set up a persona, if it would be able to see that, you know, avatar, but let's just go ahead and hit join. And this is an ad hoc meeting. Now, once it gets connected, I'm in the meeting now, you can see the meeting chat right there along the bottom side. You can see the participants, you can see the reactions, things like that. So there the reactions are coming up and I can do like a laugh emoji because this is kind of crazy. Um, I can raise my hand. I can do all that stuff, you know, that you would be able to do in iOS. If I open up the chat, there's the chat messages. So I can type in there. I can click the plus sign. I can add a loop component, all of that stuff that you would want to do. Go to details. There's the meeting details and the apps that are in this meeting. So I could add games for work. I could try that out. Let's, uh, let's try that. Let's just install that meeting app and see what happens. So there we go. I can do Minesweeper. Let's go over to Minesweeper. I think this might work better with a trackpad. So I've got this trackpad that I have paired and it works like, you know, as a cursor. So I'm not seeing, oh, okay. I'm still setting up the, the app. So now I have games for work. I can now select Minesweeper and there we go. Now we're playing Minesweeper in a meeting inside of the Vision Pro. So like, I mean, it's a pretty rich experience. Now, if I want to make this bigger, I can always go to these corners down here and I can like readjust the size. This long pill shape at the bottom, that kind of long line that you saw, that allows me to move the window around and pull it closer and push it further away. The little dot next to it, that would close outside of my, out of Microsoft Teams. Then if I look over here at the corner, you see these kind of grabbers that are on the corners. That would be if I wanted to make this wider or skinnier. So you can see that I'm kind of making this view wider. There's what it looks like right there. So we've got applications, we've got chat, we've got you know all of our stuff. I'm in this meeting right now. If I go out of it and I go over to like chats, I can still go over to here. I can talk to Alex Wilbur. I can respond to him. The meeting is still up here in the top corner. So I could always just move my cursor back over to that and click on it. And now I'm back in the meeting. Go over here, click on chat and well, click on the little back arrow. And now I'm back in my chat experience and you kind of go back and forth that way. So that's a Microsoft Teams meeting experience. Let's close out of this for now. So let's open this up. 
Let's go ahead. I can even leave or I can end the meeting for all. That's one of those organizer features. So we quit out of that meeting. Now we're going to click the X, close out of Microsoft Teams. I'm gonna click the digital crown and we can check out some of the other applications. So let's check out PowerPoint next. And it's the same type of deal. You're gonna log in with a Microsoft 365 account. I could use my E5 account. I could also use my, um, my personal uh, family account. I have a, a 365 family account as well. So for this one, let's log in with my corporate credentials because I wanna show what you get if you're trying to log in to an account that has conditional access. So I'm going to log in or attempt to log in with my work account. <clears throat> so you'll see that it brings up, you've got the logo up there at the top, you can sign into it. Um, okay, so I'm attempting to log into it. And this is what you get if you have conditional access. You get, hey, you need to set up your device. Now, if I hit continue in here, it's going to open up and it's going to say, get the app. This is, it wants to download the Intune company portal app. So we're going to click on that. The problem is I can't download that, right? So it shows up as purchased, but I can't actually get it because it's not available for Vision OS yet. So unfortunately you can't log in with a company account that has conditional access installed. If you need to Intune, you're gonna to wanna to use one of the other options that we have. Okay, so we checked out the native applications. Let's check out what a, uh, a compatible application looks like. So for that, I'm gonna show Microsoft Outlook. So we're gonna open up Outlook. This is just the standard iPad version of Microsoft Outlook. So we're gonna hit Add Account, and then I'm going to hit skip and I want to use that that you know MVP credential one that I've already got. So we're going to log in again with my MVP test tenant. We're going to bring that up. Again, it's asking me for my password. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Hopefully I got that right. I did. So I can't use my Outlook mobile app right now. I don't want to. Instead I'm going to have it text me. So there it is right there. Tap that and there's my dual factor authentication. And I don't wanna add any other accounts, but there we go. There's my email for my MVP tenant. Now I can add other email accounts. I can go into the storage. You know, I can check all that stuff out. I can also see my calendar down here at the bottom. I can see those apps, I can rearrange them. This is kind of small to me. So again, I can grab those corners. I can make it bigger and I can move it around wherever I want to. So I could put it right there. Now I've got Microsoft Outlook, and in the upper corner, I can change if I want a week, agenda, month, or day view. So that is using a compatible app that is an iOS app on Vision Pro. So the second main way that we can use Microsoft 365 on the Vision Pro at launch is to use the web applications. So if I go over here to Safari, we're gonna click on this and we're just gonna to go to office.com and I'm at the office landing page. We're gonna click sign in and then we're going to use another account. So I'm gonna use that uh, MVP account that I've got, just like that. We're going to hopefully type that correctly. I'm gonna, again, text myself because I just kind of want to streamline it. So we're gonna use that. And now I'm in the web version of office.com. I can, again, make that bigger. I can move it up a little bit because I kind of want to look up a little bit. So there's all of Office 365. From there, I can get to Outlook. I can get to Microsoft Teams. I can get to Word, PowerPoint. If I open up PowerPoint, I can load up, you know, a blank presentation and there we go. So this is nice if you kind of want like the web browser experience, you want the same experience that you would get on your laptop if you're like a web user here, web user there. It's consistent for that reason. Um, it's also good like if you, if your company allows for it and you don't want to like fully enroll your device 
in Intune using Company Portal because that's not available. Maybe you don't prefer that option. So the third way that we can use Microsoft 365 is say that you're on a corporate device and you want to just use that as like a virtual monitor. You don't want to log into anything. You don't want to install any applications. You can certainly do that if you have a Mac that is compatible. So I think it has to be running uh, Mac OS Sonoma, if, I, if I'm correct. Um, if you have that laptop, you'll be able to log in just by looking at the screen or by invoking screen mirroring. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I've grabbed my MacBook Air, I'm logged into it right here, and I want to take this screen and make it a virtual monitor. There's two ways to do this. You can, if you look at the screen, typically something will come up saying to connect to that screen. That's been kind of hit or miss for me. So the other way is to manually connect to your, um, your Mac that's on the same network logged in with the same Apple ID. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to look up to see that little arrow. And this is the command center. So the third application over right there is Mac Virtual Display. If you open that up, you're going to see different devices available to you. So you'll see I've got right here my Mac Studio available to me. So I'm, I'm just not even going to use the laptop. So you'll see right here, I've got my, my personal computer, my Mac Studio is available as one of those Mac virtual displays. If I click on it, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna connect to that as a virtual screen. So I've got this beautiful 4K monitor available to me. If I look over, I can open up another application if I want to. So like I could open up um, the Twitter X application right there. I can have that over on the side, and I've got a mixture of Mac and Vision OS applications. Now, from a, a Microsoft 365 perspective, I can just use my mouse and keyboard in my, my Mac, and I could open up Microsoft Teams, no problem. So we're gonna pop that open, and we're gonna take a look at what Microsoft Teams looks like as a virtual Mac screen so it's just running natively on my Mac Studio. We're gonna bring that up and there's Microsoft. You'll notice that like, this is Megan Bowen's account. So this account actually has conditional access. It's a corporate device as far as like what we're concerned for this video. Um, and I'm basically just remoting the screen, still using my mouse and keyboard just to you know facilitate using the apps like you would use a regular computer. The difference is I've got my Vision OS apps available as well. So I can move my mouse, I can move to the edge, and then that mouse becomes available over on that side as well. And then I can scroll down, I can use those applications uh, over on that side. I can mouse over to the edge, and then there is my, my Mac. So I can kind of seamlessly go back and forth. If I go off the edge and then I like start typing over here, my keyboard that was connected to my Mac starts typing in the Vision OS app. So it, it kind of seamlessly transitions in and out. So that's how we're able to use Vision OS to get to Microsoft 365 three different ways. There's the Mac virtual screen option. There is Apple Safari using the web browser, or there's the native applications like Microsoft Teams natively installed, optimized for Vision OS. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions or if there's anything you would like me to test out and uh, demonstrate for you. Thanks for watching.